The remaining 12 amateur cooks have been brought to the rooftop of an elite Hollywood hotel. Let's go. Come through. They'll be split into opposing teams for today's high-end catering challenge. The losing team will face a pressure test where one more cook's master chef dream will die. Welcome to London West Hollywood. Uh, this hotel has a special place in my heart because it houses my Los Angeles restaurants. You are going to be cooking for a Hollywood party right here. All right. You'll be split into two teams, and each team will have to conceptualize, prepare and cook different hors d'oeuvres for our VIP guest list. The courses are vegetable, beef, and a dessert. All of you are going to be cooking in my Michelin star kitchen downstairs. Yes! <laughs> yes! Woo! We had two stunning dishes from our last challenge. Based on that, Ben and Christian will be picking your teams. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I couldn't have asked to be a team captain for a better team challenge. I can't wait to just start the game and take Ben down. Ben, first choice. Chef, I've seen at least one contestant so far produce a presentation like this. I'm really, really hoping I'm going to be on Ben's team. I think Christian's amazing, but he's really aggressive in the kitchen. My first selection is definitely going to be Susie. Susie. Wow. wow. First round draft Wow, wow, pick. wow. The fact that Ben chose me first shows that I am one of the top dogs in MasterChef. Christian, who is it, please? Adrian. OK, Ben Starr. Tracy. Tracy. Right. Wow. I'm going to go with Alejandro. OK, good. Jan. Wow. Dark. Wow. Vester. I'm going with uh, Giuseppe. All right, Giuseppe. Let's go. I'm with the boys today. Woo. <laughs> I'm last again, almost. And I'm thinking, please, I do not want to be on Christian's team. I've seen this person produce incredible miracles under pressure, and that person is Christine. Christine. Christine for the full house. All girl team. Not all. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Nobody wants to pick me, that's fine. I don't know why, because I'm 2-0, and oh, and I perform really well on these team challenges, so all it is is just fueling my fire right now. Ben. Yes, Chef. Looks like you've got Charlie's Angels there. <laughs> huh? I had a feeling Ben was going to be picking a lot of the girls, which is fine. Girls, um, I like them. The, they're a little bit more dramatic than guys. And I think when it comes to being in a kitchen, you can't really have a lot of drama. You've got 90 minutes to prep three stunning hors d'oeuvres. We have 90 minutes to cater a Hollywood party. Hello, can somebody bring a straight jacket over here? Gordon Ramsay has lost his mind. Your time starts now. Off you go. Good. Each team has 90 minutes to devise and create 300 luxury hors d'oeuvres from the ingredients in Chef Ramsay's kitchen. Each one of you is going to take ownership of a single course. I am not a dictator. If you want your team to produce brilliant results, you have to empower them to do something that they're passionate about. First course is veggie. Does anybody have? I can do veggie. You can do veggie. Gazpacho. OK. Beef. Beef. Yes. Beef. Sure beef. Do, do you beef. want ribeye, short ribs, or filet? Filet. Filet. Christine's doing an open-faced Wellington, a little bit of puff pastry, mushrooms, filet, creme fraiche, done. Last course is Esther's beautiful, dainty chocolate profiteroles. Listen, I'm your bitch. I'm here to support you. Let's go, guys. Ben is running his team in a democratic fashion. But on the red team, Christian's making all the calls. All right, vegetable, gazpacho. Gazpacho, let me see. Christian has a menu mapped out in his head, and that's what we're going with. Some of his ideas, I'm wondering if they're a little too risky or edgy. Beef, we'll do a little tartare, yes. a little pepper, we'll torch it. I'm in charge of the beef tartare, and I've never made beef tartare. I mean, I've never even eaten beef tartare. It's a risky thing, because, you know, it's raw meat. And for the dessert, do profiterole with filling. Okay, let's do this, guys. Right. Christian and Ben, please. Ben. Ben. Yes, chef. Two seconds, please. Christian, let's go. Quick. So Gordon calls me and Ben over um, for a little powwow to go over our menus. Ben. Let's go, Ben. Come on. Now. I don't have time for this 
I just had to yell at Ben to get over there because he's wasting my time. If Gordon can yell in the kitchen, I think uh, I can yell in the kitchen too. Told you about the dishes. Vegetable, we have a gazpacho shooter. Chris, they must have been listening to us because um, Adrian won with the gazpacho. So, uh... so are you two copying each other? No shot. The list of ingredients here is extraordinary. I mean, yes, really extraordinary. Desserts Esther, on a high. What is it? Esther is on dessert. She's doing very dainty chocolate profiteroles with a lattice of chocolate on top. Wow. Uh, ambitious. Um, a profiterole again. And uh, wow. Same dishes competing. Have the balls yes. mm -hmm. to change if Absolutely. it's not hitting perfection. You're the captains for a reason. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Listen, we don't have to change courses here. All we have to do is make sure ours tastes better. Esther. Look at me, look at me. You're not gonna work like a little pig in my kitchen. Yes. I want that mess cleaned up. I'm cleaning everything up right now. Despite Gordon's fear of similar menus, Adrian and Susie are both going ahead with their gazpachos. I've done gazpacho a couple of times before. I'm gonna keep it simple and keep it like really delicious and fresh. Adrian, how are we doing? Doing all right. I need to adjust my seasonings. I'm doing a gazpacho again, but I'm doing a dual. Are you doing them at the same time or layered? Yeah. It's going in the same cup, so it's just layered. Make sure they're the same thickness. Obviously, this looks like puree, and this one's thinner, so right. just be careful about that. Not only do I find out that Adrian's doing a gazpacho, uh, but he's doing a duo. He's like the one-upper. I'm so screwed. Meanwhile, Christine is trying to ensure her cooked beef dish beats Derek's raw beef tartare. Just went through a pressure test where I had to cook a filet, so hopefully I can do it again. <laughs> Only concern is that I overcook, which I hope I don't do. <sighs> do I cut out, cut out thick, thick, thick like that? Oh, that's why. I'm... I have Derek on the beef and raw meat's very risky, but I'm sticking with my plan, and uh, you know that's what chefs do. Esther is going up against Giuseppe on the dessert course. He's ditched a disastrous batch of profiteroles and is now switching to fruit tarts. The profiterole didn't come out right. I didn't have a, a scale, so I had to go by eye. And uh, like that is very hard, man. You can't make it. Mamma mia. <laughs> Esther also managed to mess up her first batch of profiteroles. Attempt number two isn't going much better. I think there's something wrong with this flour. Esther, what's that for? I'm making the batter again. Something went wrong. I could tell right when I touched that. Okay. that... You're making a shoe pastry for dessert? Yes. Concerns? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm deeply concerned. Okay. Concerned that they take 12 to 15 minutes to cook. Right. 15 minutes to cool down. Right. Are you mad? If I don't have a dessert ready on time, then we forfeit the dessert course. And all those votes will automatically go to the red team. If it's not cooked in the center, you're right. screwed. I just need Gordon to get out of my face. Six hundred hors d'oeuvres for the Hollywood cocktail party must be served in just 30 minutes. But Gordon isn't happy with progress so far. I mean, I'm deeply concerned. If it's not cooked in the center, you're right. screwed. One bite wonders, yeah? Let's go. Both teams are putting final touches to their gazpachos. OK, I want you guys to try this. Okay. More salt. Yeah. So we can put um, just like a dash of this on the bottom and then the bread over the top. Giuseppe, how's it going now? All right. All right, that doesn't, I don't, I, you don't sound positive, Olivia. buddy. Olivia, look at this. Hey, look at this guy. OK. Uh, it, needs, it needs something green. Do we have mint? Hey, it's good. All right. While Giuseppe is delighted with his red team dessert, Esther on the blue team is having more problems with her second batch of pastry dough. What is all that in there? Yeah, my shoe dough doesn't work. That's all shoe dough? Yeah, it's How much did you make? I was trying to do enough, like 100, and um, just in case I'm burned, but. I am gonna make a third batch of dough, and this time it's gonna work. I know I can do this. I have to do it. Derek is up against Christine in the beef hors d'oeuvre. As the blue team puts the finishing touches on their mini beef wellington, Chef Ramsay is concerned with the size. Is that right, the pastry being that thick on there? It's just very, very thick. 
I have an extra pastry dough circle on top. And Gordon comes by and he's like, this is supposed to be an hors d'oeuvre, not a freaking whatever. So it's like, this is too thick. Do you want to pull the top layer off? So, it's a lot of pastry there for yes. a little, very little beef. Just like that, guys. Go, just do like it. That. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Red team, who's serving? Red team, who's serving? I don't know, it's supposed to go for it. Who's serving from the red team? Uh, I'm not sure, Chef. Fishing not sure. Hey, lights are on, but everyone's off to Italy. I have nightmares all night, oh, Gordon. With time running out, Joe is worried the red team's beef dish is beyond redemption. You're going to serve a raw, raw we're gonna, meat? We're, 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 we're going to sear it off with the torch so it doesn't... So with the torch? Yes. I've never seen anyone blowtorch raw beef okay. in a tartare. I think you're taking a big risk serving raw beef to this whole big crowd of random people. Eleven minutes to go. After screwing up her profiterole dough twice, Esther has finally mastered batch number three. They, these are good. I put the third dough in the oven and they look beautiful. I'm so relieved. The final task is to pipe in a perfectly mixed chocolate mousse filling. Ben. Yes, Chef. The mix is broken. Just taste the mix. It's like eating a mouthful of olive oil, butter, broken, greasy. I've done this dough three times, and you're telling me the filling's wrong now? Susie. Yeah. Show me the bag. Here you go, Chef. Yeah. You're piping it and your pipe in broken mousse. This whole course has been a frickin' disaster. Yes, Chef. Because that is disgusting. You're not gonna let us serve this. With the filling ruined and time running out, the blue team must come up with a new dessert. Fast. With two fruit. Yes. yes. Strawberry, kumquats. strawberry, kumquats, basil. Perfect, done. Go. The only thing we have time to make is berries. That's it. And do we even have time to do that? You okay, Ben? I'm losing it here. Ben, what is the dessert now, please? Lightly macerated seasonal strawberries and kumquats and a chiffonade of basil. So how do they eat them out of the cup? Is it a spoon, teaspoon? What is it? It's a fruit shot. I can sell anything, chef. I'm taking it up there. I really think that this whole challenge is going to come down to dessert. And if this is what it's going to be with only minutes left on the clock, we are screwed. Blue team, they actually put together the last moment a sloppy dessert. Some fruit, put in some paper, and you're supposed to just shove it down like this. Come on, this is a high life, people. You have to give them something that looks elegant. Last minute, blue team, come on. See those ones right there? Put yeah. some basil on those. All right, stay focused, girl. OK, let's go. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Well done. Bring them up front. Kumquat fruit salad with cream. It's the worst dish I've ever seen compiled in MasterChef. And on top of that, that is the worst dish that's ever left my kitchen. I could cry. I could freaking cry. For this Hollywood cocktail party challenge, the red and blue teams have each made 300 hors d'oeuvres. The guests will try each of the team's three courses and vote for their favorites. Whichever team wins the most courses will be the winner. First up, the vegetarian course. Susie's tomato mint gazpacho for the blue team is taking on Adrian's duo of gazpachos for the red team. I've got a chilled mint gazpacho. This is really a head-to-head. -head. His dish doesn't look as pretty as mine. It's kind of heavy-handed. But I've got this, like, cool, chilled gazpacho with, like, this flower on top that's, like, edible and beautiful. And it's, like, a really sexy dish for, like, this party. OK, Wait. so. Let's one. shoot up. Let's do it. Cheers. Well, you have a very beautiful smile. So you're one point already. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
I think it's too salty for me. Too It'll salty? Too salty, yeah. Okay. And Adrian, a double gazpacho. Oh Everyone my. taste one each. The balance of the sweetness and the saltiness is very good. Thank you. The green doesn't want to liberate itself from the glass. Oh, maybe this will work. <laughs> <laughs> you put your finger. No, but the thing is that you cannot serve that in a restaurant because it doesn't go down. For the meat course, the blue team is serving a mini beef wellington. And the red team has a torched beef tartare. I have a play on beef wellington. Cheers, guys. You got it in a bite? Bite? No, she didn't know it in a bite. You see, that's the problem with the two-bite hors d'oeuvre, that eventually you'll get a piece of portobello mushroom dribbling out of your lip. OK, and now we'll go to the red team. This is the classic take on beef tartare one torch. Bite. Cheers, one bite. Cheers. Good? It's got a nice, yeah, it's got a nice tang to it. Got a little more, yeah, tang. All right, so you got to think about it, because we're going to ask you to vote. This is very big. Finally, it's time for dessert. Can the blue team's five-minute fruit cup stand a chance against Giuseppe's elegant fruit tart? Hello, ladies. We have your first bite of springtime here. Fresh local strawberries with kumquats, just a hint of basil and a little bit of whipped cream. It's a guilt-free way to end your evening. It's a shooter. Just okay, take it right in, all in one bite. Try to keep it in your mouth. <laughs> and then from the red Enjoy. team, Giuseppe, what did you get? All right, we have a pastry with the sweet mascarpone cheese, raspberries, blueberries, and a little touch of agava. If I don't win this this time, I'm going to be completely devastated, I swear to God. They were both <laughs> amazing, okay. but that one did it for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I was shocked. She liked the band dessert better. I can't believe it. I have to go in the red, actually. Oh. But that was a little difficult to eat. This was just nice and classic for me, and it was good, and the texture was there. Right, split Thank decision. You. Nice guy. All three courses have been served. The guests mark their voting cards as the party winds down. We hit a hiccup. We kept going. I could not feel more proud of my girls at this point. Each and every one of them performed flawlessly. Two, three, four. The votes have been counted. The first team to win two of the three courses will win the challenge, while the losers will face the dreaded pressure test, where at least one person will be eliminated from MasterChef. As far as looks and taste, I think we nailed it. And we're going to win. The first course was a delicious vegetable course. One gazpacho more classic, one gazpacho double flavored with guac on the bottom and tomato on top. One team came up ahead on the gazpacho challenge, and it was with 64% of the vote. Red team. So the red team, a little bit more complex, perhaps, a little bit sexy in design. We really liked the way it looked, the double flavor. So excellent job. All right, the beef. Derek, you look excited. No, I just, I, I was You're just getting excited. beef. Yeah. All right, well, you were in charge of your team's beef hors d'oeuvre, the tartare of tenderloin. Blue team, we had the beef wellington. Who was in charge of that? Christine. Christine. Was, yeah. This is where it gets interesting. One team somehow was able to garner 100% of the votes. Wow. What? Every guest that dined tonight that enjoyed the hors d'oeuvres enjoyed the blue teams. Oh my wow. God. Rock out, girl. People underestimate me as a cook. When you put me against the wall, then I would usually come out fighting. You just never know what I'm going to bring. Red team, for me, the tartare was bland. It needed help. I knew the tartare was risky, but I didn't expect a full sweep, and, and nobody did. It's neck and neck. One to the blue team, one to the red team. And it's all down to the dessert. Blue team, you came up with a seasonal spring fruits with a cream. Red team, you came up with a puff pastry. When it comes down to dessert, I'm feeling like it's over. It would take a miracle for our fruit cup to win over Giuseppe's. It was a very narrow margin. The winners of the dessert course with 53% of the vote. Red team. Yes! 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 
I feel great. I give actually the victory to my team. <laughs> this is a beautiful Hollywood ending. I couldn't be better than that. Being in Gordon's kitchen and winning the challenge is awesome. Good, Good job, man. Proud of my team, proud of me, and we nailed it. No pressure test for us. I feel like a failure as a leader because they were trusting me to lead them to a win. It came down to dessert, and it was Esther's fault that we lost. Blue team, you'll be facing a very demanding pressure test. Get some rest. Good night. Let's go. Come over, guys, please. Let's go. Since my beef wellington was so amazing last night, it just blows that I'm standing here. I'm angry because it's not my fault. My team is facing a pressure test. Had I been able to deliver the dessert I wanted to, I don't think we would be here today. Red team, you were the real stars last night, and you will not be facing the pressure test. Make your way up to the gallery. Watch and learn. I feel amazing that I don't have to go into the pressure test because nobody has any idea what it's going to be, but we do know that somebody's going home, and I know that that somebody is not me. OK. For this pressure test, you all will have to create one of these. A stunning, delicious, eye-capturing layered cake. A masterpiece built on textures, taste, and visual impact. I've been baking since about age 10, so I'm extremely comfortable baking cakes. You'll have two hours to make a cake with a minimum of six layers of sponge. Why six layers? Why, why do you need to eat six layers of cake? OK, on your stations, please. And remember, whoever has the worst layered cake in this pressure test, at least one of you will be leaving Master Chef. Two hours. From now, off you go. In this pressure test, the cooks will have two hours to produce a delectable six-layer cake. The judges will be looking for perfect construction and presentation, as well as amazing taste. I'm just going to go with a standard vanilla chiffon cake. I'm going to do a cream cheese frosting and maybe add a little bit of basil and strawberry flavoring to that. I'm going to do an ice cream sundae, basically, in a layered cake. So we're going to do banana. We're going to have a little bit of hazelnut. So that's kind of the game plan right now. Six layers for a professional chef. It's a tall ass, right? Right. right. You have to have the technicality of baking, mm -hmm. architecture, construction, mm -hmm. flavor profile, chemistry. The base of the cake has to be a thick layer, mm -hmm. so it stands up when you slice that wedge. Mm -hmm. The layers in between don't have to be as thick as the bottom base. Right. Otherwise, it becomes top heavy. It's going to topple. All right, Ben. Hello. How are we doing? It's going to be an awful elimination today. Who do you think now is at risk of going home? I don't want anybody to go home from personal conversations that Tracy hasn't baked a lot. Hey, Tracy. How are you today? There's a lot of talk about you being uh, a little unexperienced in making desserts. I'm actually not the top baker in this competition. Who do you think is going to struggle here? Um, me. Christine, talk to me about your cake. I'm going to do raspberry, strawberry, and apricot to jam in the middle. Jam? Yes. Nice. Preserve. OK, good. But I'm going to pipe a little icing on the outside so it doesn't go. Christine, 30 seconds with you. I need a bottle. I have some room. <laughs> All right, Susie, what are you doing? I'm doing a chocolate sponge cake, and in between, I'm doing a raspberry whip, and then a pecan crust on the sides, okay. and then ganache on top. And Super then... simple, no garnish, no nothing. Um, yeah. Right, Ben, 
Yes, Chef. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very good, Chef. I'm making a cake that I've made many times. This is a pumpkin carrot sponge. In between the pumpkin, what are you putting in there? Uh, I'm doing a cream cheese frosting, and uh, I'm going to candy some hazelnut to coat the outside, give it a kind of nice, rustic, but still elegant look. Hi, Esther. How are we doing? Hi, Chef. How are you? What's wrong? You seem so... So quiet and down and defeated. What's wrong? I'm not defeated. I'm okay. just focused. Good. You have as good a chance as anybody in this kitchen to pull it out and to win. Okay, folks. One hour left, and one person is going home. While the cakes are cooling, the cooks are able to prepare their icing, which will be critical to the construction and flavor of their final cake. On the sponge cake side, everyone seemed to bake them, get yeah. them out of the oven, and we're mm -hmm. slicing them pretty good. I got quite excited about Ben Starr's pumpkin carrot. However, there's no aeration in the cake, so it's a weighted mass. Yeah, it's like an orange doorstop. It's about yeah. that thick, and it looks heavy as hell. Yeah, Esther is still whipping her frosting. Yeah, that's now, not a good sign. If you're just whipping your frosting now, by the time you pipe it on the cake, it's going to be melted butter, you know? So yeah. they really have some uh, risk with timing now. Coming up to 30 minutes left. You should now start constructing the layers. The key is to just keep the stand cake up. Doing just a little adjustments here to make sure it's level. Christine, how many's on there? You're missing two layers, yeah? Yeah, I have it right here, chef. OK, good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Thanks, chef. I just layer it up, and I'm really not paying attention of how thick the icing is or how thick the jam is. Just over 15 minutes to go. Stupid cake. That's the trace. All the way around. Let the palette knife do the work. I'm liking the consistency. I'm liking the layers. It's it's standing up there nicely. And then I've realized I've made a crucial error. No, it's not on. I didn't put the thing underneath. You know those little cake rounds that help you move the cake from place to place? Yeah. I forgot it. Put them next to each other. Maybe you just slide it right over. I literally lift the cake up and put it onto this glass round. However, the shape of it is just not the same. Five minutes to go. Your cake should now be assembled, and you should be putting your finishing touches on there. I'm freaking out a little bit. Time is running out, and I'm just trying to get the cake filled. I'm throwing icing in there, I'm throwing curd in there, I'm throwing fresh fruit in there, and I've lost count of the layers. Last minute. Really? My icing is melting everywhere. Start putting those final touches. 30 seconds to go. I'm in a mad dash to even give them a cake I can present. This is just stupid. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Okay. Stupid cake. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Okay. Stupid cake. That has been the most difficult pressure test ever so far in the history of MasterChef. And from here, they look amazing. But at least one of you will be leaving MasterChef. OK, Ben Starr, let's go. Right, Ben. Yes, Chef. Are you OK? I'm wonderful. Talk I... to me. I've been perfecting this cake for five years, and I believe this is the first time I have had the ingredients to be able to give you something that represents me truly as a cook. Okay. And the ability to finally do that in this competition is overwhelming Great. for me. Okay, good. Describe the cake. Chef, this is a pumpkin carrot cake with cream cheese frosting and candied hazelnuts. There we go. Finally, Ben Starr has arrived. Oh, my God. I swear to God. That looks 
phenomenal. Thank you, Chef. Absolutely sublime. That is extraordinary. Absolute magic on a fork. Just letting it finish. My mouth just had an orgasm. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like I have finally spoken to the judges my language, and they've understood it for the first time. This is Ben Starr. This is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Susie, let's bring it up. My cake looks amazing. It's decadent, it's luscious, and I hope they love it. Today I made a ganache and a pecan encrusted cake with chantilly cream on top. Each layer also has just a chantilly whip with a hint of raspberry as well. When you mentioned crusted, uh, it definitely <laughs> is that. This one's like, we're gonna kinda have to do one of these numbers, like. The Chantilly, I really wish there was more of it. Just some more mouthfeel to kind of balance out with the cake. You know, when I saw you putting the ganache on top of the cake, it was like perfect. And then you went and you put this, I don't even know what this is. It looks like kind of mold growing up a tree on the outside. So there was a minimalistic kind of perfection to this cake that kind of went to hell. I mean, this is, it's gross. I literally just got served like a piece of humble pie. And I'm realizing that there are people in this competition that could possibly be like way better than me. Okay, Tracy, come on up. I'm thinking, please God, just let the cake stand long enough for them to cut it and put it on a plate. I made a sweet basil and citrus infused syrup and um, blended that in with a sweet cream cheese. So Tracy, there's two things I notice. A, the asymmetrical construction of the cake, and B is the frown on your face. It's good. I think that the orange zest and basil really kind of makes it pop a little bit and gives it some brightness and flavor. It's simple, clean, and um, intriguing. Thank you. Jennifer, let's go. What is it? It is a play on a banana split. So you have your strawberries on top, your nuts on the side, your banana on the inside, your chocolate on the inside. <laughs> that looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate goes brilliantly with a sponge and it's sweetened by the strawberries and it tastes delicious. Great job. Esther, please come forward. It's a lemon raspberry cake. It's filled with a lemon curd, fresh okay. raspberries, and then there's a sponge cake are brushed with a raspberry and lemon syrup. It's very, very sweet, almost overly so. The excitement about a layer cake shows the level of finesse right. in the construction, but it looks like it's been put together in a panic. I'm struggling with the lack of balance. It's got that sort of overpowering acidic but sweetness to it. And it doesn't really work. I'm frustrated because I could have done that so much better. I ran out of time. Okay, Christine. It's layers of apricots, 
raspberries, strawberries, um, a little bit of hazelnut liqueur. It's just a layer upon layer. It seems a little bit kind of um, sweet on sweet, one dimensional, no contrast, like uh, boring. Okay, Christine, the frosting on the outside is what? <clears throat> it's buttercream. Sponge is perfect. The cake's lacking personality. And it's pretty sort of run of the mill. All of you, come down, please. I'm really disappointed in myself. Like, this is by far the worst I've ever done. And it sucks that it was during a pressure test. Two hours to produce a stunning six layered delicious cake. Sadly, at least one of you will be leaving MasterChef. Right, Tracy, step forward. Jennifer, step forward. Ben Starr, step forward. Take you, Tracy, and Jennifer, upstairs. Congratulations. <laughs> Let's go. OK, Esther, Christine, Susie. Clearly, all three in the bottom half. Susie, it wasn't your best shot. Christine, on the back of your performance with the Beef Wellington, the cake didn't match anywhere near what you produced in the last challenge. Esther, awkward, didn't really work, and a bizarre texture. Christine, step forward, please. You've done a lot inside this competition and at times you've really handled the pressure brilliantly three of us are proud of you and i'm sure right now your dad and your son are equally as proud of you I'm sorry after the six layer cake pressure test it's down to the last three christine you've done a lot inside this competition and at times you've really handled the pressure brilliantly christine i'm sorry take your apron upstairs the balcony i think i almost peed myself People keep underestimating me. I'm still here to win it, so you just better watch it. At this point, I think I just got hit by a truck. And I've got this feeling inside of me that, like, this is my time. Esther, Susie, we've got the neural engineer versus the lawyer. It's down to me and Susie. I quit my job. I'm here. And this opportunity means the world to me. I'm not ready to go home. Susie, what frustrated all three of us was the fact that you had something on the verge of stunning, but the add-ons and the pecans just didn't work. You don't know where to draw the line in the sand. Esther, you're a very technical, intelligent cook, but you looked out of your depth across those two hours. Esther, step forward. Esther. Take your apron off. Your time is done in MasterChef. Promise? I'm St promising. Stay on that journey. I will. I'm not going to yeah. give up. I'm not going to go back to being just a lawyer. It takes a lot of courage and conviction to quit your job, but it's absolutely worth it when you pursue your passion. Food excites me, and I feel empowered leaving MasterChef. The world is my oyster. Susie, sometimes across these challenges you go in denial. And there's parts of you that produce sort of fake ideas. 
and unfortunately they don't really wash. So we tell you to make you better and you seem to ignore that advice. Take the advice, run with it and come back strong. You may be walking on thin ice but the ganache was delicious. Take your apron upstairs and join the rest of them. Let's go. I never, ever, ever in my life ever want to do a pressure test again. That was my hell. That was honestly the worst feeling I ever had in my life. That was so much disappointment in myself. I'm never going to be in there again. Next time on MasterChef. The biggest mystery box we've ever had. One cook's aggression is unleashed. I'm not here to make promises. And one judge's temper boils over. Show these people the same respect they show you. If not, I'm going to personally come over there and throw you out of here. And another home cook's master chef dreams will come to an end. I am speechless. <laughs>